Okay, friends, welcome back to second phase of the second module. Okay, we are going to continue our discussion on layers and services. Okay, so let us start again from physical and detailing layer. Remember what is the job of these two layers? Anything learning on last two layers provide two different services a wired card, wireless card, or whatever. Okay, even when even when you use a mobile phone, or there is a small adapter which does both. First, it's called sending the bits across in form of signals, some signals. That is the job of physical layer. The second is called framing. Okay, that's the job of data link layer. The network layer decides the next immediate neighbor and send packets to next immediate neighbor. That's the job. The first one is called routing. It decides who the next neighbor for a given destination. And that is not very easy. It has to know who is sitting where, who is which server is where. For example, when I type www.yahoo.com, it must know where the Yahoo server is and send that content to the, the router next to it, which is nearest to that Yahoo server. So, that is the job of the network layer. Okay. What is the job of transport layer? And I have told you that there are three different types of transport layers. TCP, UDP and SCTP provided by TCP IP model. Okay. TCP provides connection oriented service and that is the default model for most of the application connection oriented service on top of IP's connection less content and delivery mechanism. UDP provides connection less delivery mechanism. You may be surprised why one need that, we will be talking about that soon. SCTP provides best of the both worlds and it, it does something really great, but will be again Hold on, we will be talking about that much later in, in this particular course. The application layer is one of the example is called DNS or a domain name system which converts the URL that we type or all mail address that we type into something called an IP address. Okay. So, and it prefers using UDP for typical reasons and SMTP for example, the mailing protocol that we use in internet uses TCP. Okay. So, they use the advantage is that the application can choose the protocol that it, it want to work with. Okay. It is something like this we have already seen the current layer gets the service from the lower layer and provides services to the higher layer. Higher layer demands service from the lower layer and lower layer in turn demands service from the further lower layer. Okay. When you look at the internet from the normal user's view, it is like what is shown on the screen. We have different networks and what we assume that they are all connected to internet. Internet is some form of a cloud which connects all these networks. In fact, the correct way to look at the internet from a technical perspective is that these networks are connected to each other by something called routers and here the routers are shown as um, a, a, a circle containing uh, cross. So, you can see that those, those routers and there is a pretty common uh, way to show routers and you can see that they are not visible. In fact, they are all transparent to us. We only can see what others are doing um, Facebook post and blogs and other things. We hardly in fact, we do not know that the routers exist actually and that is why it is it is shown that way. Okay. But then in, in a communication process, the sender sends something and receiver receives that and there are routers in between and we have already seen the role of each layer. The sender gives something to the application layer, it goes down to the physical layer, it goes to the physical layer of the first intermediary router, then it goes to the second intermediary router and then it goes to the receiver. In fact, in this particular case, we talk about two intermediary routers, but that could be 100 as well, okay. could be any number. Okay. So, but we will be continuing with the very example for some time. In fact, we will in the third uh, module, we will be looking at a precise application and exactly how these layers function together to, to solve problems like sending an email or uh, sending an HTTP request and so on, we will we'll look at. Okay. What is the role of IP? In fact, I have already mentioned that earlier, but let us try to see how this thing happens. You can see that every network in this is sending some packets across and you can see these routers are actually directing those packets to their right destinations and that is their job. 
Okay. So, that is the job of IP or network layer. In previous module, we use word network layer. Now, we use word IP because now we are talking about TCP IP model. The IP is, is the, the network layer for TCP IP model. Okay. What is the job of TCP in that case? TCP help transmit data irrespective of the type of network. There may be we have seen that this data is being transmitted, but we have never specified what kind of networks they are. In fact, TCP transmit data across without really looking at uh, the type of network whether it is wired or wireless or ethernet or whatever. So, it does not look at the type of address, it does not look at the type of data link and physical layers or the card that I am using, I am using a 10 GB card or 2 GB card or whatever or I am using a mobile phone or whatever, whatever adapter that I am using it does not really care, it does not remember this is called independence of the protocol. In fact, TCP runs a transport layer, it, it does not depend the functioning of TCP does not depend on either physical data link or any other layer actually. Okay. The way physical layer converts bits into signals and there are many ways of doing it. Let me tell you it is not an easy job. In fact, the there is an entire discipline called data communication talks about this. Okay. So, how this is done? This data bits are converted into signals. Not only that, how, how the data layer, layer frames the data. Okay. Remember that packet from the network layer is buried inside the data link layer how that thing happens TCP does not bother. In fact, TCP does not bother about any other layer physical detailing or network. Okay, friends. So, what we have seen in this first uh, second phase, we have looked further into TCP IP model, we have seen the role of IP, how IP works, how IP routes. And, and the job of network layer is to find out the exact destination for every incoming packet and, and deliver it to the right destination. Remember there are two things needed for it, it has to know exactly whenever a, a recipient is specified for example, the IP must know where exactly it is in the entire network, it has to figure out the right uh, next neighbor and we have seen that it is doing it, every, every router, every intermediary networks do this thing continuously in the entire internet and that is the reason why we are able to access to all these websites and things and so on and so forth. Okay. So, that is a very very critical function, but as I said there are two parts of it. The first part is it, it finds out who is where and knowing that is called routing and there are algorithms called routing algorithms for it. And second obviously, it has to forward every incoming packet to it. Seemingly, the first task uh, it seems complex and the second task is not all that complex. But in true sense, in real sense, the second task is more complex because of the very uh, volume of data that are, that, that are being carried across internet. Okay, so, routers for example, um, some Cisco routers are able to carry more than 300 TB of uh, process, three more than 300 TB of data per second. Now, that kind of the speed that is needed that kind of packet inflow is. So, when you have to do that thing in real time you require real processing. So, those things will we, uh, we have to see in fact um, that they are done at network layer and those designers do it. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, friend and let us now move on to the third phase after this break. Thank you.